Hey guys, welcome back. It is your favorite Gimp with Limp, and I'm back with some more Death Ride. And this one, sadly enough, is going to be the last of the playing parts of Death Ride. I think I'm going to do a separate video where I do just a final review talking about it, because this one, uh, uh, it, the series deserves its own review specifically, right? Done differently from just uh, staring at the table. So I'll have that as a follow on. I wanted to touch on a couple things before we get started. Uh, one, since it, basically I've just run out of time. This one, it's been on my table for weeks. I've got others I've got to get to the table. So that's why I'm having to cut it short. Uh, we're not short, but just having to cut it here. I've actually done a fair amount of videos. I think this is going to have four or five videos on it. So I definitely devoted some time to this one. Uh, one of the things I did stumble across when I was reading over the rules as it was talking about when you're moving units along the road that they can only move in platoon fashion. I was, uh, and, and that's only mentioned one part of the rule book up in the stacking section. There's just, that's one of those things that uh, I'm addressing the review, but there's just little spots like that that need to be fleshed out further. Um, not just a, a simple line in there, because if you miss that line, that can change things like how I'm moving all of these uh, German units up. I mean, that would have to change because now they can't stack at all into the company size elements that I have them in. They would have to stick to platoon size, which would way, 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 way slow them down uh, in this combat. And I, I kind of get that. But now with the amount of units that have to come on the board and then the amount of units is still coming on because I still haven't got anywhere near finished with the amount of units that are still supposed to be coming in from these two directions. Um, they, God, I can't even imagine how many turns it would take if you had to stretch them all out platoon size at best along the road. But that's one of the rules that's in the game. So keep that in mind. That is something that I goofed on. It's supposed to be platoon size. Honestly, I almost think I would nix that rule. I just don't think it works too well uh, for this because you could have a, a group of units stacked up for movement, whatever, and then you uh, move them to the road and then suddenly you got to break them up and then move them along the road and then put them back together. And then with the odd movement points and just uh, too much of a hassle, I would probably just ignore it if it were me personally. And I do think... When I was doing this combat earlier, I should have used different markers. There are markers for fired and then opportunity fired. It's not a huge deal, but it is a minor thing. You know, make sure you do that right. But I'm going to touch on that in the rules or the uh, the review, rather. This is one of the, the favorite parts of the game for me is the, the way that the fire system works and that it can end up in this really intricate ballet of back and forth between uh, opportunity or movement and then opportunity fire and then overwatch that trying to protect it. So there's, there's an actual chance to protect your units from the opportunity fire of, a, of an enemy unit, which is not something that I've seen done in other games. So really cool. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's a bit convoluted. It's a bit complicated and it, it's easy to mess up the modifiers and all the different other aspects of the game, but it is what it is. Uh, we've done a fair amount of combat up here. I wanted to do some down over here. Just do some tank combat. So we're going to move over to there. Uh, like I said, this is the, the last bit of the playthrough part that I'm going to do. And then I'm just going to do the review itself. Uh, but I wanted to show as much of it as I could. So over here, we have some German units. I had some German guns that I was moving up. AA guns, but... They can direct fire. They do have direct fire uh, capabilities. I think that's like 88s. I think these are 88s because they are very, very powerful. And I'm not sure what these are, but they have direct fire capability. Both of them are set into a movement mode right now. And I've got British tanks that are getting ready to come around. And I wanted to kind of do at least a little sum of this uh, over here. So that's what I'm going to focus on for this video. And then the next video we'll pick up with... Uh, just the review itself. So I want to move these guys into their their deployed fashion. I'm trying to see, should I just dump them here? Just flip them over? These guys are in a good position because they have a view here of this entire ridge 
right? And my plan was to basically come up with some tanks along the ridge and then bring the others around down, you know, come along. But this, if I just flip them over half their movement points, they would have a fair amount of firepower. Let's see, what is their firepower? It is six at range of nine, and they got the plus, so they're heavy. And these are a lighter unit. They have no plus, but they do have a range of six. And this is with their primary. Uh, secondary at fire, they do have a range of four. Uh, where was I? I think it was here. So he can see into the ridge. Do I back him up just one? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, we'll back him up just one. Really doesn't matter that big of a deal. But I got three of these guns, right? Meow. And it would probably be better just to target one, but they have a fair amount of defense. Yeah, they got 12 defense, but they got some severe, severe firepower. So I'm probably going to do that. We're just going to flip them over into their deployed side. That way I can do some attacks here with the British just to, just to move the tanks up, just to get it going. Because you do have to remember with this game, if it is a medium unit, medium or heavy, which you can tell by the color code up in the upper right of the counter, all right? So you see like this is a soft target, it's got no color, but this is medium targets. They have that orange color in the upper right. Uh, they can only be damaged fully by something that has the firepower to do so. A, uh, a infantry unit or something lighter firing at these uh, medium and heavies cannot do anything past two to one. So what I mean by that, let me grab the, the player aid here, is when you're looking at this sheet for fire combat, no matter how high the assets are, no matter how many guns you got pointing at them, if they are not of the right capabilities, they can't go higher than this column, right? So you could be above six to one. You could have, you know, 20 to one. Wouldn't matter. You would still be at the two if you didn't have the right types of weapons uh, firing at them. Plus, they can't get a eliminated option, which doesn't really start ticking in until you get to over here anyway. But they do not have the ability to just be eliminated outright. Yeah, so... Actually, looking at it, this anti-aircraft, this is light AA because it does not have the plus. So it cannot go above the two column when firing at these medium targets. This one can. These can, but this cannot. Uh, and you can have a artillery support that. So like this one over here that does have a plus can support them. That gives them the, the ability to have an X result, but they still can't go above the two column, right? That's what it says, right? So it can't go above the two column, but it can get an X result. But the thing of it is, I'm looking at it, I'm like, okay, well, the two column doesn't have any friggin' X. So what do you mean it can go up to the two column, but it, or, or can't go above the two column, but it can have X's. Like there's no X on the two column, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, so it's talking about it here in the rule book. Armored units, medium targets, blah, blah, blah. Can't go above the two column when attacked solely by an infantry type. And then it lists out the different infantry types, things like uh, mechanized, recon, maintenance, supply, medical, all that uh, type stuff. Unless it has like something else there supporting it. So our A guns aren't going to be able to do as much here, but here they can. So we'll have to make the best use of those that we can. All right, so let's just do this. Because like I said, we're, we're I'm cutting this a little bit shorter. And I just wanted to show some tank combat because I haven't had any tank combat yet. So we're just going to skip over the rest of the Germans' activation. We're just focusing on a little bit here. And we're going to switch over to the British and let them move up some of these tanks. And we'll get some... Uh, some fire, some op fire, some back and forth uh, going over here. Now, remember, one of the interesting things with the British tanks here is that the majority of these were light Matildas. They did not have anything besides a machine gun. That's why they only have a secondary fire attribute. But 
the uh, few that are like Matilda version four. So this one, this one does have a cannon, but it's only like a 37 mil. So it's not that big. But we got this one can go up there. I'm thinking about bringing a couple around over here and doing a little fire with them. And then maybe these two up on the ridge to to fire down as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what we're going to do. Okay. So let's do this. We're going to pick up a couple of tanks. Well, which will be easier because this, if we add up, that's six and they're going to have negative modifiers. Yeah. If I do that and they're firing at both of those tanks, that's, it's going to be almost impossible for them to get any damage done. I might have to just move up a single tank because I'd be adding these defenses together and that'd be 22 versus the 11 that they are. They're firing at both. I want them to kind of destroy at least something, you know, blow up at least one tank or cause some damage. So we'll move a, a single tank to start with. So he's going to move there. Now this AA is going to fire down. And if we add up the total, there's three of them. And they can fire with their, yeah, yeah, they can fire with everything. So they have a firepower of four, actually, instead of two, because they're firing with their primary and secondary. They can't go above the two column. So if that's four, uh, four, eight, 12, 12, that's one to one. Yeah, I can bring up two tanks. So move two tanks and that will be on the, the two column. Oh no, that would be one to one. It was one to one there or right at one to one. If I had a second one, that'd be 0.5. Yeah. God, this is what I'm talking about. The, the damn firing gets a little confusing. You know what? Since they have some negative modifiers already gone, we're just going to stick with a single tank. I'm not going to fiddle with it because they do have the surprise table still to worry about. And the Germans get a negative two and they only get a times one. So they're getting a negative two. And that's before we add in any other modifiers that are going to apply. And the most they can get is that two table. All right. Uh, they're not moving now. They moved on previous turns, British turn, so that's not going to apply. Target's not adjacent. Uh, it's not greater than seven hexes. Where's that? Less than seven hexes. Oh, for a plus. It's a plus weapon. They are not a plus weapon. So that's not going to matter. Oh, an enfilade fire up here. This this is talking about if you've got one unit firing like here and then another unit firing into their flank, you can get extra bonuses for that. Uh, they're not above, not swamp, not stream, no close air support. Uh, let's see, what is their, their total? They've got 12 to 11. So they're at one to one. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll stick with the one to one easy enough. Uh, target hex one more Rex. No, no smoke, no blow, no smoke there. No town, not moving opportunity fire or defensive fire. It is opportunity fire. Uh, so it's going to be the first one. Vehicles are the front. So they get a negative three. Oh wait, they're not vehicles. Damn, does that, it has to mean the fire, right? So it's opportunity fire or defensive fire. So these numbers are opportunity fire. Second set is uh, defensive fire and then vehicles are infantry. So they are not vehicles. They are considered a saw target. So they are effectively infantry. So they are going to be getting uh, just a negative zero. So that's not gonna matter. And they're not suppressed and not withdrawal movement. All right, cool. So that means the only thing they're getting is the negative two simply from the uh, the fact that it's Germans on the back foot at the start of this mission. All right, so negative two on the, or yeah, negative two on the one-to-one -one table. 
four. That's going to be nothing. And I've dropped them down to a two. And two's right there. Damn. Nothing. Knew that was going to. And that was with them firing everything they freaking had, man. All right. Let's. Uh, where's my fired marker? There should be one that's like fired everything. Yeah, here we go. Fire complete. They have fired everything they got. And you know what? I'm going to move up because I need more tanks to equal it. Because if they've got a defensive six, they got a defensive six. And there's three of them. That is going to bring them up to 18. And I would need multiple tanks to get that. Why am I up there? One, two. I don't think he can make it as well. Yeah, we'll just do a couple of tanks more. And I think I can do that. <gasps> no, wait, because that would be... I have to finish with the first one. I have to finish what he's doing. Right? So I could continue to move him. And try to get closer and get the adjacency bonus. Yeah, screw it. <laughs> we'll go up. I'm saving him because he's going to be firing this way. So he came around and he's going to there. He's going to fire into them adjacency with his 50 cal machine gun, which is only a three, three to 18. Is... Crap, wait. I don't even think I can do anything to him because I got to have a number higher. Or I have to meet at least a one to four odds. Which that is not, that's one to six. That is one to six. So he doesn't get to fire at all, even with all that. Two tanks can fire though. Two tanks can. So we'll just do this. These two are going to fire. So there's six uh, against 18. Six against 18 is going to be a one to three. One to three is the best they can get. But I do get some bonuses. I do get some bonuses here. Uh, they are going to get the times two. Whoa, 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 that's right. He does get times two. So he would be six. So he gets to fire at uh, one to three. Yay. And I'll do this one uh, after that. All right. So he's firing at one to three and he's getting some bonuses. He's getting the plus three from this. Comp this is what I'm talking about. There's so many little modifiers that you got to worry about. Damn. There's so many. All right. He's already getting the plus three. He's going to get the plus two from the target adjacent. Uh, minus two from firing after moving. So that's zero. That zero is out. That works. Uh, nothing else I think is going to apply here. Yep. So he just gets a plus three, but he is on the one, two, three column. <laughs> Right there. I just realized how that sounds. The one, two, three column. <laughs> one against three columns. Say it that way. All right. So not very likely to actually do anything, but hey, we'll see what happens. Seven plus three is nine. Nine is going to be S1. He does. He does eke out just a little bit of damage. I'll be damned. So we'll mark him as suppressed and we'll do this shot as well. All right. So they're taking this shot. They're at six times two times 12, 12 against 18 defense. Oh, good God. That, what is that? That's two to three. I think that puts them on the 0.75 column. You guys let me know if I'm wrong on that one, but I do believe uh, that is going to be it. And... No other modifiers except for the ones that we already had. So it should be the same as this, with the exception that they're not adjacent. So they are only going to get a plus one instead of a plus three because they lose that plus two adjacency bonus. So come on, big money, big money. What is that? That's a nine. Nine brings them to 10. On the point seven five column, another S1. So that brings that up to an S two s2 against the guy very nice very nice all right so did a little something something and remember that gets flipped over to green 
at the end of the turn. Right, so it uh, goes to there and then that gets brought down over consecutive turns as long as they're not uh, continue to be attacked. All right, well, that takes care of those tanks. Let's mark them as fired. All right, fire complete, fire complete for those guys. And now here's what I'm gonna do. And I might be off on the movement points here, but I'm still a little wonky on what counts for moving fire anyway. So screw it. I'm not going to overly concern myself with it. Uh, we're going to move him up first. So he incurs the shot coming in. And then these two Matilda fours are going to come up and fire down on those guns as well. All right. So they're going to fire down. And we're just doing it just to do it. We're having a little fun with it. Screw it. So he is firing opportunity fire up there, trying to take out a tank. Let's see if we can get something going for the Germans. They are firing with everything they got and they get the plus. So they're doing good. Each one of those has six. The primary and the secondary have a value of six. Wow. That's pretty good for those guys. Good, 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 good. All right, so that's 12, 24, 24 against the 11. Uh, should be bringing him down. Uh, yeah, he's not even 1.5, so damn, that's another one. Wow. And modifiers, he is going to get the minus two that the Germans get for the surprise table, the early part of the combat, no times anything. And he's going to get a plus two because he is firing heavy weapons under seven hexes. So that wipes out that negative modifier that he is getting. So right now he's at zero. He's at the one-to-one -one column firing up at the tank with no other modifiers, but target is higher because technically he's up on this little ridge. Let's see if that matters. Adjacent fire above target now. Where's target above? No, well, it doesn't look like it matters. Let's just roll on our table and see what we get here. He gets a four on the one to one and nothing. I was hoping I could get the Germans to at least kill something, but it does not look like that's going to happen. So we will do our shot here. These two Matilda 4s firing down on those 88s, seeing if they can take them out. Each of them have a total firepower of 5, so that's 10 versus their 12. So that's going to be another 0.75 shot, I believe. All right. Mark him off fire complete. Uh, their 10. Oh, wait, that gets bumped up to a 20. So 20 against their 12. All right, sorry, I got distracted there for a sec, but we're back. Uh, I do believe this is going to be totally a one-to-one -one combat with all the the pluses, the doublings, and all the other surprise table stuff, but they are getting the plus three. The plus three, and I'm not worrying about this one because I don't think he has, well, he might have enough with that being double, but don't worry about it for now. Uh Combat here, he's getting the plus three, and I believe that's it. Wait, no, they are above. Fire above, target plus one per level. Now they are at 100. This is 75. So that should be two levels, so that's another plus two. So I think the total is going to be a plus five on the one to one column. And if it's not, eh. One off ain't gonna be a big deal. So let's fire the tanks. He got a one on the one to one table. Plus five puts him in a six, which is an S1. An S1 result. So they did get one little bit of suppression. So there we go. Got a little more combat done. I wanted to have the Germans at least kill one tank, but those uh those defensive numbers are very hard to crack unless you are using something with some severe firepower behind it, like the 88s. But the Germans start off at a severe, severe disadvantage. Uh, the British, I really think with this mission, the British 
their entire goal is to come in and just smash as much of the German stuff as they can and then pull out. They can't last long, right? Eventually, there is going to be overwhelming German forces because they're coming in from four different angles, right? You got the two roads down over here and then the corner up over there where three groups are going to be coming in. So you've got this prong that's going to come in it and then this prong down here that's going to come in, right? And just two British prongs. So they're, it's kind of like it was in real life. Their goal is to come down, boom, 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 and then pull out because that advantage that's giving them the ability to get all these suppression results and destroyed results, it's going to slowly tick away as they lose that advantage. And then things will start to flip because now they're going to start being surrounded. They can have heavier weapons and artillery pouring in on them. So it becomes a lot more difficult for the British as the battle goes on. All right. Normally when I would finish up a playthrough like this, I would get into the specifics of whether or not I think the game's worth getting, but I'm going to save all those thoughts for the next part, the next uh, video where I'm just covering all of it because I want to go over Death Ride as a system. I think it deserves its own video talking about its merits and its drawbacks because there's it's got a lot of good going for it, but it's got a lot bad going for it uh, in the same vein. As far as Death Rider Ross goes for its components, uh, for the most part, the components are fine. The only drawback that I can really harp on for it is what I've already talked about in the first few videos, uh, which is the counters. The printing just wasn't done that well, uh, especially on some of the German counters when it comes to the white lettering. There's a few uh, British counters that do have that issue. Other than that, the, the counters are fine. I like the little wooden counters. I like the laser cut. It, that's never bothered me. The player aids themselves are nice. Uh, I do like how they are color coded, so it makes it easier to keep track of things that uh, are going to apply or not. And definitely, definitely, if you are new to Death Ride or Death Ride Ross specifically, you want to not worry about all the optional rules. I would just do like I've done here. You know, put some counters on the board, move them around a little bit, throw some dice, do some modifiers, and poke around at it because you really need to take your time with it, learn the, the different modifiers because I know I made some mistakes up here with the combat modifier here, modifier there. Uh, there's just so many different things that can affect the combat and the fact that the combat is fluid Right. It is not a move, then shoot, then he's going to move, then he's going to shoot. There's a lot of back and forth that can come into play here. So you really want to take your time and, and get used to the system because it is different than what you've probably been used to previously. All right. But that's going to be it for this video and the uh, the playthrough aspect of the game itself. Uh, you guys stay tuned. Like I said, I'm going to put out just a quick five, 10 minute video where I do the review at, of Death Ride as a whole. All right. You guys take care. I will catch you in the next one.